Sneak attack. Four wheels, four cylinders, a hood, a steering wheel, 180 horsepower, two front seats, two nipples, a butt. I've just described to you the Loch Ness Monster. If you get that office reference, drop a like because they're taking it off Netflix and now I'm not completely sure what I'm gonna do with the rest of my life. Uh, just kind of sit around and watch The Office when I go home, but it's a new year, so it's time for a new series. You read the title. We're not talking about old Nessie. We're talking about the world famous Honda Civic. Being produced for over 47 years and selling millions and millions of models throughout the entire world, you'd think this car would be largely accepted into the car community with open arms. Wrong. These cars take more from people than a toilet. They get beat on, modded to hell, and still run with 250,000 miles. So why do Honda Civics get so much hate? Wheels, tires, and suspension, fitmentindustries.com, and check out the giveaway we have going on with Koenig. You can literally win free wheels for your car. Every $5 spent is an entry. We got a long sleeve, we got a crew neck, we got some air fresheners, and uh, I love winning free stuff, especially car parts. I don't think there's anything better than winning free car parts. So the first generation Honda Civic came out in 1972 and was made just to help with the oil crisis going on. The car's main selling point was fuel economy and we're going to skip right past this. People like you and people like me don't care about fuel economy, all right? We care about the ponies, not the fuel. Coming into the second generation in 1979, things got as exciting as going for 99 cooking. Not that exciting. It came with a 55 horsepower engine with the option for a 67 horsepower one. Uh, what's the point of that? 55 to 67 horsepower in a car is like asking if you'd like to upgrade your Baja Blast from a large to a Husky. Just give me the biggest you got and quit around. It featured slightly sharper lines and that's about it for that. And I'm starting to see why car enthusiasts weren't too excited to hop into this. But wait, what's that? 1983 came in with a banger, the third generation Honda Civic. This beautiful, beautiful hatchback. We had the Civic version, we had the CRX, which also had an SI model, which finally made car enthusiasts ears perk up a little bit and reach out for their first auto loans. If the performance model wasn't your cup of tea, it also came in a Wago van. These things look dope. I seriously love them. They're a little bread box. Now, taking fuel economy with a little dash of performance, these things earned some cool points. However, they were destroyed by what's commonly known as, well, rice. With these cars being affordable, anybody and everybody got their hands on them. With cheap cars comes cheap parts. I think Uncle Ben said that. This is right when we start to see cheap body kits, questionable DIYs, and trying to pull every single horse out of the stable on that naturally aspirated four-cylinder, including straight pipes. Stop straight piping your NA four-cylinder and driving past my house at 3 a.m. There are only a few cars that can pull off a straight pipe, all right? Leave it to the S2000s. Those guys, they can, they can handle it. Your Civic, it's not, don't, that's enough. The problem is with those cheap mods and barely making 100 horsepower in your Japanese economy car, not everyone in the car scene was opening their arms to welcome it into their car shows and drag races. You had things like the Corvette, the Z28 Camaro, and the Ford Thunderbird. <laughs> that came in and were slapping cars around with their big old meaty V8s. Now, I'm not dogging on the Civic because I genuinely like them. I really love them. I love front wheel drive, four cylinder cars for some reason, but there has and always will be a rivalry between the four cylinders and the V8s, and that's where a good amount of this hate would come from. Now, for the next 30 years, Honda would run with this style, four banger, naturally aspirated, and offering an SI trim. Honda found a recipe, baby, and it worked, and they were gonna milk that puppy dry, all right? Make it an everyday economy car that would take you to and from work with 30 30 to 40 miles per gallon, and then edging out into the enthusiast market, offering their SI and Type R trims. Through the years, the car got rounder and rounder, like when you take, you know, like silly putty and you roll it in your hands and you make that perfect ball. That's like what they were doing with the Civic. Until we got to the 10th generation released in 2015. But in 2017, things changed. 
featuring sharp lines again, but that's not all. No, 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 no. For the first time in over 40 years, Honda said, wait a minute, what if, what, what if we made it not naturally aspirated? What if we threw a turbocharger on this mother Not only is the car looking better than ever, but it's now boosted from the factory. Finally gave us what we want, thank you. Pushing the front two tires is a 1.5 liter four cylinder turbocharged engine with 200, 205 horsepower. It only took 40 years, but we're in triple digits in the 200s, baby. <laughs> For real though, it seemed every single model of the SI was an improvement throughout the years and Honda was taking notes and refining its precious baby. The car offers a great driving experience, but still is falling short compared to its modern day turbocharged front wheel drive friends. The Focus ST, the Volkswagen GTI, hell, even the damn SRT4s and Cobalt SS's are putting car links on these new SIs. Now the Civic did have a trick up its sleeve with the Type R model. The most powerful Civic yet. 306 horsepower, fantastic aero, amazing seats. You thought it had it all. One problem, while all the other super hatches like the Focus RS and the Golf R went all wheel drive, Honda decided they're like, nah, you know what? Let's just keep the front two. I like the front wheel drive, that's good. That's going to keep the hate meter on this car on the higher end. Honda, you're so damn close to giving us what we want. We waited for the turbo. We love the new Type R. Just give us some more ponies and all wheel drive, please. You're blue balling the hell out of me. Overall, the Honda Civic is a good car. Plagued by its economy heritage and questionable modifications from its owners, it's still one of the most bought cars on the planet. And I think that says a lot. Give credit where credit is due. But what do you think of the Honda Civic? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Drop a comment below. I'm gonna read every single one of them. Don't forget wheels, tires, and suspension, fitmentindustries.com. And then I think I'm going to put this car in a level eight for the hate meter. Not only did some of the owners give them a bad name, but Honda needs to get with the times. It always feels like they are a few years behind, but they're putting out great stuff. I don't know. Let me know what you think gets too much hate in the car community and let's talk about it, all right? Bye.